welcome to Caffeinated Arcade. Today we're going to be doing a little bit of world building. As you can see, um, my normal players aren't here. Um, some of them aren't feeling well, so just wishing them the best. And I figured we could do just some um, world building and getting to know the realm of Alan a little bit better. So you've seen it in the Adventures of Alan stream. But we're gonna dive in, and then I figured maybe uh, the chat could make some roles for us today and um, just create some NPCs, um, dive into some locations, and yeah, it'll just be fun and casual. We'll go from there. So, so I'm gonna pull up, I'm gonna pull up the map, the map where the campaign, where where the campaign takes, place, takes place, so you all can see it. So you all can see it. Do a little do zoom in. A little but zoom this is the continent, but this is the continent uh, Brista, uh, Brista uh, in the world of Holland. Uh, so we'll do so a little bit of zoom, a little here. bit of zoom in here. But this is where but this is where um, the majority um, of our majority campaign, of our campaign, campaign has been taking campaign place. Been taking place. So, so Brista was, was affected, affected by a war a hundred years, years ago. Years so, ago. It's still, so it's still so it's still fairly recent. Um, fairly recent. For, um, for um, some of the people who live on this continent, continent especially like elves, especially and, like elves and um, species um, that species that a little bit longer, so they definitely so they definitely remember this. Remember actually, this. actually, one of our players, one of our plays, players um, plays um, a character. A character was alive during this alive during the Scythian War and also had a part in it. So, so Brista here, Brista here. Um, we have it broken up into broken up into two parts. So we have so we have the realm, the realm. Sorry, not the realm, uh, sorry, not the, the alliance. The alliance. Uh, the Crestborn alliance, alliance, which is, alliance, is which is purple. purple. Uh, the capital uh, city's name, city name is Crestborn. And essentially, and this, essentially is a newer country, this is a newer country that formed, that formed when, when the war was happening. The war was happening. And, um, and uh, three separate, three separate uh, uh, countries. So you have Crestborn, you have, Crestborn, you have Mirai, and then, uh, and then uh, Chamnora. Chamnora. That were exactly too happy with what was going on. Um, then you have then these you have the polar these opposite, the polar opposite um, on the left and um, green and green and and it's interesting because it's interesting our party hasn't, hasn't been here yet. Been here yet. Um, this is um, this is the Belarus dynasty. The, Belarus dynasty. Um, the capital um, the is Abavarma, and we actually have and we actually a character who is from here. Is from here. And um, and um, things um, are things are a little bit more bleak, a little bit more bleak, um, bleak because not because all not is allowed. And it's very, and it's very um, um, more of a dictatorship, of a dictatorship, especially with King Belarus being a paranoid of, of, of magic users. And our, and um, our um, wizard is actually wizard there, is actually so that's kind of an interesting kind of dynamic. dynamic. But then, but then we scroll over the Crestborn. Crestborn's Crestborn's more open more towards magic open users, towards actually, magic users actually, actually, very much so, very much to where, so, to where um, half of its half society is essentially built, essentially built. Academy for academy arcane, arcane arts, arts, and, and um, you have the Mariah Academy. The Mariah academy. Um, um, so it's very, so it's very advanced, advanced when it comes to the arcane, to the arcane, and a lot of and um, a lot of civilization, um, civilization, you'll see, like, see um, like um, holo holographic, um, images, holographic images, and it's all, and it's um, all very exciting. Um, very so, exciting. Um, so there's a lot going, um, there's a lot going on. Door. on door. Um, Crestborn, and, and it's been interesting. It's been interesting to see the party, party. Uh, interact uh, with us. So, with us. so we have Sunimi, who is, um, is um, a lizard folk, a lizard folk druid, druid, and, and not, and not and very used to, used to um, just technology, just as, a technology, whole. technology as a whole. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Um, I have a little bit of an echo. I think I know what that is, so I'll turn it down. Let me know if that's better. That should fix things a little bit. Had to do a quick setup here, but um, yeah. Soon. Oh, thank you. Echo is gone. Sweet. So, um, Crestborn um, is interesting when we have uh, Sunivi coming here, who's a lizard folk druid, and he's actually from the Chamnora Swamp area. Um, so it's been interesting to see some of the party interact with um, all these arcane inventions. Um, we had. Uh, 
automaton as a uh, barista, <laughs> which is kind of fun in an earlier episode. So uh, there's just a lot of stuff going on for Crestborn here. Um, so most of the world building I've done so far has actually stayed within the Alliance. I kind of started there just because I knew that's where the campaign would be um, starting out. They started in the village of Sundance, which is kind of this epicenter of religion and um, worship for the saints. So instead of um, like gods and goddesses, um, Alan actually has uh, saints who are all pretty um, humanoid in nature and ascended to the point of being immortal. So um, I've been referring to them as like the first of elven kind, but um, it's pretty interesting. And Sundance is um, the place where Aiden Nightingale, the Saint of Sunlight, was first ascended. So she was this war hero um, who became more um, important as the story of the war went on. So um, they thought they would get to be there, but <laughs> no, she was already ascended. And they kind of helped out um, in that smaller village first before making the trek to Crestborn. And there's some political tension going on in Crestborn, so they have, like, um, Iraxium, who's this um, official who's about to be elected in the office as, like, the civilian representative, and they decided that he was up to some interesting um, shenanigans, you could say, um, dealing with uh, arcane amplifiers that affect spellcasters, and trying to sell them to the academy in secret, so there's just a lot of not good stuff. Um, so they actually took, well, they're trying to take Iraxium out, so that's where we'll get to pick up next week and everything with the campaign. Uh, super excited about it. So then, uh, let's see, what haven't we talked about yet? We'll scroll down a little bit to these islands here. Um, let's start with Port Belleville. So this one's actually one I started writing out recently, just because with the proximity to Crestborn, um, I try to make sure I have everything planned within a, I guess you could say, radius of where the players currently are, just in case they decide to jump ship and go somewhere completely different. You never know with players, they do those things. So, um, Port Belleville, it's all centered around a theater, uh, known as the Mer Meridian Theater, um, and it's a center for the arts. I'm a musician for a living, so, um, I thought it would make a city completely based on music, so that has been fun to write out. But, let's go ahead and dive a little bit more into Port Belleville have some notes here on it. Okay. So, here's kind of what I have written so far for this. Um, so, there's a gatehouse as soon as you walk in, and I tried to do uh, some maps for this. Oh, speaking of which, I'm totally off track, but this map here, um, I'll zoom out a little bit, but I'm super proud. I actually made this. <laughs> um, I say that because I have um, no drawing skills whatsoever, so I'm kind of happy with how it turned out. It's not perfect, of course, but um, it was a lot of fun. I used Incarnate to uh, make it, so a lot of fun on that front. None of my maps have turned out as well since then, but I'm trying. <laughs> so let's get back to Port Belleville. So um, entering Port Belleville, um, we have some locations. So the first one is the gatehouse. Oop, I'm highlighting stuff and I'm not sure why. There we go, <laughs> fixed it. When you can turn your brainchild into an image, others can recognize it's pretty cool. Yeah, that's true. Um, it's nice because it's, um, I can visualize things now. 
So in Port Belleville, the first thing you see would be a beautiful gatehouse adorned with seashells and magically lit lanterns, leading the way to winding cobblestone streets packed with vendors and colorful market stalls. So the homes and shops are organized and very close together, a lot of them being accessed through alleyways, uh, branching off into the main roads. The town plaza contains more vendors, a small stage for live music, and a mermaid fountain surrounded by more uh, magical lan lanterns. So there's silver and copper pieces glimmering at the bottom of the fountain, with the occasional gold piece standing out. Um, so Port Belleville, along with some of the other ports along the Lilac Bay, um, they're basically most of the time worshipping the saint um, Arwena, who's essentially like the goddess of the sea around that area, so it's a pretty common theme. So you'll see like a lot of mermaids and uh, things within the statues and um, architecture. But then um, <laughs> one of my favorite things to do, as I'm sure all DMs can relate to, is um, making tavern names that are super punny. Um, I have the blush and muscle um, for the main tavern in Port Belleville, which is known for its fresh she seafood, and then um, being built directly into the dock. Uh, giving patrons a nice view of the Lilac Bay. Um, so, we have a couple shops, too, that I made. Um, we have the Siren Selling Wares, um, which is, man, that's a tongue twister. I don't know why I did that to myself. And then the Bayside Banshee, which is kind of tucked back. It's more of like a... <laughs> that's true. Um... It could be a brothel. That would be interesting. So, um, the siren selling wares I had as more of just like a touristy kind of knickknack shop. So there are some healing potions, nothing too crazy, um, in terms of like magic items. And, um, then if you go into one of the back alleyways. I have the Bayside Banshee, which is more of a, like, forbidden magic shop, so, um, it'll be interesting to see what, um, all goes into that, considering, um, the Alliance is pretty accepting of all types of magic, so if something's forbidden, it must be not that great. <laughs> so, um, let's see what I have here. I wrote this a while ago, so my memory is kind of given up on me but I thought it would be interesting if a hag um ran the shop so um it would be interesting to get um oh I even gave her a name when did I do that I'm proud of myself that's interesting <laughs> I can't pronounce the name that I just gave her we're killed Ooh, nice but then I have the locals call her Moth, due to all the moths that flock to the lantern she keeps within the store. Ooh, spooky. And then, of course I have maybe, there's like a dangerous magic item or something in the store. Nice, so <laughs> I had more planned for that than I thought, it's super cool. Then let's see what I have for the Meridian Theater so far. So, I had this as like the centerpiece of Port Belleville, so I thought it would be interesting to do like a side plot for the party. Um, I won't mention too much about it just in case they're listening, but um, basically maybe um, some sort of evil bard, um, either uh, stealing souls or like doing some uh, creepy shit <laughs> within the town. Um, let's see here. Oh, I wrote a description of it. That's fun. So, um, the biggest attraction in Port Belleville, both in size and reputation. It's a wide, um, almost circular structure, uh, with long winding staircases, and there's three, uh, towers that accent the building that also provide box seating for the elite. Um, the wooden flooring is painted a deep blue, and the walls are lined with, um, portraits of famous people and there's multicolored magical orbs dancing within the hallways 
and the main auditorium, providing the light and a beautiful display. Oh, it's so nice. There's a lot of lanterns in this town. I kind of like the theme. So that's what I have so far for uh, Port Belleville. So let me know in the comments um, if there's anything that you think would be fun to add uh, to that location. Um, I have the start of a fun NPC, it looks like. The current owner is Lark D. Meridian. I love the middle initial use. <laughs> I have no idea what this middle name is. A human with short, dark brown hair and lavender eyes, who is business savvy, who loves the performing arts, and also has some magical abilities as well. Hmm, I wonder if we could turn this into the bard. That seemed kind of nice though. So, let me see if Roll20 will let me make a new stat block here. Um, let's add on to characters. There we go. I love the random names. Okay, so I have him as a lark, and he's like the owner of the theater, considering his last name kind of matches. So we'll save that. That looks good. And then... Let's use the character mancer. You're gonna see me out of my element a little bit here. I normally use other um, programs for this. Welcome to the character mancer. So we said human. Ah. <laughs> super tiny and I have horrible eyesight so I'm gonna go over here. There we go, now I can see better. Hmm. A fur ball would be super fun though. Hmm. If anyone's there in the chat. Let me know what species I should make this character. I originally had it as human, but now I'm starting to change my mind. I also have a fairy. That would be fun. I've always wanted to make a fairy character. Here's a bugbear. Um... Why not? That's super fun. That's a wisdom based character, though, but we'll, we'll work with it. Let's say for now. Oh, that's true. I could roll for it. Let's see here. Um, how many do I have? 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Let's do a D.
And that's a good question. I don't have examifiers. Okay, I think I have it. Okay, so that's gonna put us towards the end. That's pretty high. Okay. I'm up for it. That's super cool. <laughs> so I got a tabaxi. I'm all for some randomness. And if we're going with a bard, dexterity and charisma, that's perfect. Nice. Cool, so we'll just say neutral good for now on the NPC alignment. Then they have perception, proficiency in perception and stealth skills. Um, language profic proficiencies. I cannot talk today. Um, there's a lot of elves in this location, so let's go with elvish. Feline agility. Okay, and time to choose a class. So that's Bard for sure. So we have simple weapons and crossbow. Let's go with performance. That's always fun. I'm just kind of choosing these at random. Um Probably persuasion. This character is a business owner. Owns the theater. Also probably deception on that note. <laughs> and then uh, three tool proficiencies. Hmm. So a lot of these are instruments for the part. Um, let's go with <laughs> no, that's amazing we'll go standard with a loot then dulcimer is kind of fun the thunder sheet I love the thunder sheet So we have loot, we have dulcimer, and then yeah, I'm putting thunder sheet in there. Why not? And so I'll just put that as a custom. <laughs> okay. Um. It looks like abilities wise for that. I'm gonna roll for stats, because this could be a disaster, and I love it. Standard, roll 4d6, drop the lowest. Oh, that didn't work. That's a lot of dice. Okay, that's a pretty good array. Oh. That's impressive. I accidentally rolled twice and they're both pretty good. I'll take it. So then we'll input these. Um, hmm. We have a bar. Um, so I'll go with the first roll since I accidentally rolled twice, I'll be honest. Um, the 17 should probably go in charisma. Then, um, I 
my computer is like all confused because of the two rolls. Um, let's go. Dex in the second highest. Then we'll go. Oh, and Constitution. Let's see. Put strength as the lowest. I did not do that right. We'll fix it later. It's not working with me. Then a background. Hmm. What should we do for the background? We have... This character is a business owner, owns a theater, so maybe. Ah! Uh, that's tough. Maybe noble? Um. Guild merchant, possibly. They lost would be kind of fun. Merchant, yeah! Nice, we'll go with that. Insight. Uh, <laughs> insight. Um, a buff to persuasion, that's good. And then we have more tools. Not instruments this time. That's true. That would also work. Here, we'll roll for it. So, evens. We have merchant odds we have charlatan which one did i say for which charlatan there we go <laughs> i can remember things i promise that's deception sleight of hand and then yay it actually um, picks the tool proficiencies for me. Disguise kit and forgery kit. I like that better. Ooh, that's fun. You have created a second identity that includes documentation, established acquaintances, and disguises. So, that would be kind of fun um, in terms of that I'm considering making this character kind of the villain of this area, so some espionage. That could be a blast. <laughs> and then we have to choose for a scam. So we'll make this random too. Um, they're all pretty good though, so I cheat at games involving chance, I shave coins or forge documents, and then Insinuate myself into people's lives to prey on their weaknesses and secure their fortunes. Wow. <laughs> um, yeah, those are all pretty good. Let's roll for it. I put on new identities. Like those. Okay. We'll go with it. Then, we have personality traits. Um... Yeah, these are all pretty standard. Let's see what we get. I fall in and out of love easily and I'm always pursuing someone. That's interesting. Maybe that's some of the motivation for um, the scams he runs. That'd be an interesting twist. Flattery is my preferred trick for getting what I want. Okay, solid. Then we have to choose the bond next. Somewhere out there, I have a child who doesn't know me. I'm making the world better for him or her. Oh, that's sweet. Now I actually feel bad for making this person the villain. I love how I'm just going with all like randomized options. This is so fun. Flaw, I'm always in debt. I spend my ill-gotten gains on decadent luxuries faster than I bring them in. Hmm, I wonder how that would work with 
him owning a theater that's fairly successful. Ooh, that's a good thought. The way they make it better for their kid is by taking over the world for them to inherit. So maybe almost like monopolizing the area of Port Belleville. That would be kind of interesting. I like that. Because I feel like some of the best villains have the most like sincere wants and motivations, so. Our roles are working for that. Okay, so we <laughs> rolled all the personality traits in. Um, we'll go with class equipment because we'll probably have <laughs> a lot of wealth out of afterwards. Um, rapier or longsword? Rapier. Rapier is always fun. Then diplomat's pack or entertainers. Uh, diplomat. Lute or a musical instrument. Oh, I thought I picked these earlier, but I'll pick another one. Pan flute. Why not? Then. Nice. Gave him a set of weighted dice. And I think we now have our character. They're making me pick spells first. We'll just do some standard ones for now, so. Light, why not? And Vicious Mockery, a solid spell. Give him Cure Wounds, Bane. Oh, kazoo for the next instrument. I love it. We'll do a custom for that too. That's a lot more fun than pan flute. I just love the fact that when this, um, when <laughs> the party meets this NPC, he might be playing a kazoo. That just makes everything so cool. <laughs> okay. That is so true. Yeah, I feel the kazoo has a better chance of being chaotic evil. Yeah. Wicked. Okay. So we're generating our NPC. And then, real quick, let me go back to the display. So, I'm gonna close that because I have it open here. Nice! So, we have a lark, Dean Meridian, bard, owner of the Meridian Theater, and possible villain and um, evil business person. I'm here for it. So,. I completely forgot about the fact that there is a tabaxi. <laughs> that is so cool. <laughs> I was just equally excited again. Nice. It is now saving. We have a new NPC. That's a good question. Let me look. Yeah, it automatically went to something. Let me fix that, because I have a better um, playlist for this. There we go. I'm trying to stay within my playlist. <laughs> there we go. Nice. Um, so, um, what level should we make this person? I feel like level one is definitely underpowered. Let's roll for it. Why not? So we'll do. I'd like to do a little higher level of the character. So we'll roll a d6. 
one through two, it's going to be level seven. Um, three through four, um, level eight, five, six, level nine. Three. <laughs> Solid. So that gives us a level eight bard. Nice. If it will let me level up. <laughs> level one plus seven. There we go. Ooh, we have to choose a bard college. I love how I'm like diving super far into this NPC. We have College of Creation, College of Eloquence, Glamour, Lore, Swords, Valor, Whispers. I've actually only ever played College of Lore, so I haven't played the other ones yet. One of my other characters in a campaign I've been <laughs> yeah. All of my super important NPCs get full character sheets. Yeah, I do the same thing. It helps me um, just think about all the different elements of who they are and sometimes abilities actually help um, figure that out. So, hmm. Well, it looks like we have enough to where we could roll for it because I love leaving things up to chance. And this has been super fun so far. Let's see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Another list of here. So we're gonna do a custom roll. We'll make a D9. So why not? Oh, there we go. That's a seven. That's a seven. Three, four, five, six, seven. College of Valor. That's kind of fun. Um, let's go for that one. No, I'm not multi-classing. There we go. Press the wrong button. Okay. And then. Ability score increases since we upped at the level 8, so of course I'm gonna boost Charisma. And then. Yeah, for some reason, it's I'm using my laptop uh, for the uh, Roll20 stuff, so when I do the interact button in OBS, it gets a little weird. Then let's boost. Their con was kind of low, so I'll do a boosted con. So it automatically gave them 54 hit points, which is not bad. I'll take it. I'll do spells later. <laughs> That's a lot. There we go. We have our College of Valor bard. Nice. And wow, there's a lot here, so um, I'll have to go through later and, and see how to make this work, because we have um, feline agility, we can use a cat's claws, um, false identity, jack of all trades. Yeah, I love bards. This is going to be a blast. So the extra attack that comes with the College of Valor. Nice. Okay. So... We have a new NPC for um, Port Belleville, which is super fun. Um, let's see what else we can dive into. Um, why don't I pull up the NPCs that um, are in the campaign? Because, well, this is player safe knowledge because they already know about this. So let's go with Mel first. So, I'll pull her up. 
Uh, let's see here. Okay. That should uh, show now. Won't let me zoom in anymore, but we'll take it. <laughs> So, um, Mel is a character I created before, um, the campaign started, just because I knew the party would probably meet her at some point. There were a couple times in, like, the first, um, couple sessions where they came close to meeting her, but, um, went, like, a different direction or did something else and, um, didn't end up running into her. And I was kind of hoping, um, she would kind of become their NPC guide. Um, but had a couple other backups just in case, like, the story didn't really allow for it. But Mel's pretty interesting. Um, she's a divination wizard, um, level 8. So she's been pretty useful uh, for the party just with the buffs that she can give. Um, let's take a look at her spell list, because why not? <laughs> so she has standard, like, Ray of Frost um, as a cantrip. A minor illusion, um, witch bolt, disguise self. Um, the other fun thing is that, um, and it's been a fun combo that the party has been using a lot, and some of the situations they've been in um, has kind of helped out with this. Um, so she casts um, either haste or slow. Um, quite a bit, so I kind of like having her, uh, just for flavor purposes, almost play with the um, idea of time manipulation. So that's Mel, and a little bit of her backstory, just because some of it actually came out in the episode where we um, played offline for a week, but um, Mel is actually from uh, the Bella Rose dynasty, so the little... <laughs> I'm going by um, how I color-coded my map, but the green nation. <laughs> um, so she's from Epervarma, and um, Booker, one of our characters, um, rolled a couple uh, pretty high history rolls to where since he was from there he could recognize her and kind of just saw something familiar. Um, but uh, with uh, the Belarus dynasty not really liking magic, um, she's a wizard, and not only that, she's the daughter of King Bella Rose. She's so her full name is actually Princess. Let me see if I get this right. Melantha uh, Bella Rose. So um, basically, what I have for her is that she retreated. Hello, Edwin. That's a good question. So, um, what am I creating? Well, we've been going uh, location to location, and we actually just made a bard NPC for one of the uh, port towns that the party might go to coming up. So, it's good to see you in the chat. But, um, right now we're talking about the party's guide NPC, um, named Melantha. So, she's from the, um, well, what the Alliance would refer to as kind of their enemy nation. Um, the Alliance doesn't like the Belarus dynasty a whole lot. Um, but yeah, Melantha is the daughter of the king and um, ended up stealing this dark relic that um, ended up in the party's hands. And then um, at first she kind of let it uh, happen because she wanted to get rid of this artifact. Um, that she stole. She had assassins chasing after her. And then I think some of her um, reasoning, at least my headcanon, <laughs> was kind of like, okay, well, it's with them now. We'll just kind of see um, how it goes and just kind of try to follow them and travel with them just to keep an eye on things. Um, and then <laughs> um, they got the relic stolen. So th at that point she was like, Oh shit, no, I really have to stay with these losers. So um, I think that's kind of her reasoning for being the, I guess, NPC guide and helping out the party. Um, she's kind of hilarious because so far this campaign, 
Oh, absolutely. Um, this party is interesting to DM for. They're so fun, though. I can never predict what they're going to do. Um, it's utter chaos. They got arrested by the town guard, I think, their third session in? So it was kind of impressive. <laughs> um, but yeah, it will be interesting to see if Mel sticks around um, with them just depending on how things go. They're currently um, basically t trying to take out this local politician who's causing some trouble um, and she's there helping them with it. And apparently one of the party members wants to run for office within the game, so um, it's a little crazy. Our lizard folk uh, druid friend. But um, yeah, that's Melantha. Um, she's fun. I can't roll for her though. For some reason, it's kind of the joke that she's the NPC who's never there. Because <laughs> she's there in the background, but then they'll be like, Mel, how did you get here? And um, whenever I roll for her, it's usually not ones. I know, they want to run for office. They have a whole like, um, Sunivi, the lizard folk, wants to run for the civilian <laughs> representative instead of Iraxium in the game. And then um, I think it's uh, Booker. No, Tom. Um, I forget which one, but one of the B, the VP. So it's kind of hilarious. Um, they crack me up. It's beautiful. Um, yeah, I'm excited to run again next week because I have no idea how things are gonna go with them. Um, it will be a thing. <laughs> then uh, let's see here. We talked about Mel. Then the other NPC that they've run into. This one's fun because I actually did not. Um, make this NPC fully. Um, actually, one of our players did, because one of the things that I did when um, we first were setting up the game, I said, um, can you send me a contact, um, someone who your player would know in the area that they're from? And they're currently in uh, Crestborn right now. And with uh, Crestborn, um, Tom Fan is the character from there, so our tiefling rogue. Well, he's a sorcerer rogue, a multi-class. But uh, let's pull up Abacus real quick. If OBS will let me do it. So yeah, I haven't done a whole lot for Abacus yet. I just had um, <laughs> some basic stats ready just in case um, shit ever hits the fan, which with this party, <laughs> I have no idea. They're awesome. But um, Abacus, uh, yeah, was created by um, uh, Tom Fan, so he sent me the idea. Um, he was like, hey, I want my uh, benefactor to be um, an order cleric, which um, order clerics are super fun, so it was fun to kind of flash, uh, flash out. So, um, has a pretty high wisdom score and uh, perfect because he's an owl. Um, then he actually works at uh, the Mariah Academy. So one of the backstory details is that um, Tom, and he actually recently told the party this, that he got kicked out of the Mariah Academy and um, he was friends with uh, Abacus Finch, um, who would essentially want certain things done around the Crestborn and would rely on local thieves guilds, which also included um, our tiefling friend. But um, Abacus has been interesting to, I guess, like, voice as an NPC. Um, he's a Exactly! <laughs> um, that's the other thing, too. Um, when I sent the initial descriptions to um, my players. I told them that um, I would like to world build uh, with them on the areas that their characters are from. <laughs> so, of course, um, Tom getting Crestborn is a pretty big city and the capital of the Alliance. And the funny thing was, um, he started sending me details that were all based on puns. 
So literally everything in this town is a pun, um, which is kind of hilarious because they've been there for, I think, maybe four or five sessions now. So I have to kind of come up with new puns for every episode. But um, yeah, <laughs> so um, we have an Alan Order cleric, and he's been interesting to uh, roleplay because he's a lot different than Mel. Um, He's very cautious and um, hesitant um, when dealing with the party, especially with how uh, forthcoming they are. And um, he's actually had some dealings with Iraxium that the party figured out, so kind of the sketchy politician they're trying to take out currently. So they're trying to make pieces um, fit together. But my idea for um, Abacus was that um, he wants to tell the truth and nothing but the truth. So um, some of the, I guess, um, council members in Crestborn were trying to get rid of um, volumes and tomes about the war, especially from the dynasty's perspective. And he was like, I think we should have this information from both um, perspectives just to kind of see, making sure we're doing the right thing. Um, and just ended up um, getting into um, a little bit of trouble based on the fact that um, he was dealing with Iraxium, so not because of his intent. But yeah, um, that is Abacus, <laughs> who is um, a super fun character. Um, also bailed the party out of jail, so DM to the rescue. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see here. Um, anyone else I'm missing? Oh, this is <laughs> worth opening this stat block, um, because everyone, uh, knows what a troll's stats are. But, um, the party, do you ever have those NPCs where you don't expect them to be important? But the party just kind of latches on to them, and then you end up having to flush them out later. <laughs> so I have one of those, um, Sam uh, the Troll, who owns a bakery in Crestborn. And... <laughs> Is that Belifra? I, I had no idea. That's hilarious. Um, but yeah, Sam owns a bakery that's like the cover-up for uh, the Arcane Defiance Thieves Guild. And um, basically you enter the bakery and then there's like a secret entrance that you would go through um, getting to the thieves hideout. But then, um, <laughs> I'm laughing at the chat, but it's hilarious. Blifra was just supposed to be this person, then y'all turned her into a villain. Yeah, I suppose that's true. That does make sense. Um, yeah, we always have those NPCs that become important <laughs> because of the party. But the party, like, loves Sam um, as a baker, so they keep revisiting and buying his cookies. And the sign on the bakery is spelled wrong, so it's, like, bakery uh, with a C, which is fun. So that's Sam the Troll. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for NPCs. Um, a couple areas I actually don't have fleshed out a whole lot, but I'll... Um, talk about because they're fun. Um, and then, um, let's see here. I'll give you guys a little bit more of the map. See what you think here. So we talked a lot about the Alliance because that's where the party's at right now. I have some areas of the map that they haven't gone to at all. So um, one of them being the Belrose Dynasty. Um, which is where our character and wizard uh, Booker is from. Then we have Nuova, which is a city of elves. Um, then we have the Blighted Lands, um, which is really fun. Then we have uh, Winterhola, or um, the way it would actually be pronounced, Winterhola. What do you guys think? We have a couple different areas. I love how I put the 
skull and crossbones on the blade of plants. Some of the things, um, I will say, created in this map are literally just because there were options in Incarnate. And I was like, oh sweet, there's a skull and crossbones. This area must be scary. Um, then there's like a random kraken over here that wasn't originally planned, but it was a stamp, so now there has to be a kraken there in some way. Um, also, this never shows in the game. Ooh, that's a good question. Um, what makes them bladed? And that's my little whirlpool over there that I have no idea what it is, but it looked cool in the map maker, so I had to include it. Um, so the Blighted Lands, let's talk about that a little bit. Um, so I don't have this area super fleshed out, but basically the premise is that it used to be an elven society, um, which is why the city of Nuova exists, because the elves had to basically um, pack up everything and move um, during the war, because um, this area got attacked um, by Lycidas, which is the Saint of Darkness, and also the forces of the dynasty. Oh, that's the other reason why um, the Alliance doesn't like the dynasty. They sided with the evil um, saint during the war. But um, this land was attacked. Um, the city was basically destroyed. And um, essentially with a bunch of saints fighting <laughs> in that specific area, um, and that part was like lost uh, to the Dark Saints. So there are a lot of monsters still left in that area. That was like the one part of the um, continent that didn't recover at all. Um, there's a lot of monsters. Um, I thought it would be fun to like create maybe a vampire society. Um, so that's where Death's Gate would be. Um, which is there on the map. So there are actually um, civilizations and cities that I have within the Blighted Lands. Not as many, of course, but um, it's interesting because, like, depending on where you live, there are certain um, areas in the continent of Brista where um, there's tales of the horrors of the Blighted Lands and um, not the, the trek there. So usually when um, my headcanon is that when people travel in uh, Brista, they usually <laughs> try to make their way around that area just because there's a lot of things to fight in. It would be a little dangerous. The other element of it that I've considered is maybe it's not as um, like treacherous as people think it is. So giving some more life uh, to the societies that live there and um, kind of like with, uh, in Critical Role, uh, I'm gonna get the name wrong, but the Cream Dynasty, uh, with the Bright Queen. I thought that arc was super good, so, um, maybe something along those lines. We'll see. <laughs> um, but I'm definitely sold on, oh, nice, I got it right. Um, I'm definitely sold on Death's Gate being, like, a vampire society, because that would be super fun. Um, yeah, so that's the Blighted Lands. Um, I'm excited for the party to go there. Maybe at upper levels. <laughs> They're only level 3 right now, so... That would be <laughs> unfortunate. Um, let's see here. What else can we talk about? Well, the other two areas I don't have fleshed out as much, but I'll give a little the synopsis because it's fun. Um, we'll start with Epivarma, which one of our characters is from. Um, so he has all this information. So I'm not sharing anything with you guys that the party doesn't know. But um, Epivarma is um, basically the center of the Belarus dynasty. And they sided with Lysidus during the war. Um, and they are actually still rebuilding. Um, I will scroll down a little bit because I have a couple other cities below. Um, I basically have it where Palum Rock used to be their uh, capital, uh, but with it being destroyed uh, during the war, um, they picked more of a central location 
that was um, further away from the Alliance. Um, so that's kind of why they're in this area up here. But yeah, Epifarm is um, pretty cool. The thing I'm experimenting with on that location is with the king being paranoid of magic. Um, maybe having that one city based around an anti-magic field. Um, I feel like it's a little OP though, so I might just say the castle. Um, we'll see. I'm still kind of working on that and looking at certain spells <laughs> and making sure it actually makes sense. So that's one of the ideas I have for that area. Um, then below Epivarma, we have actually the only magic school that's in uh, the side of the continent, the Spires of Ekaros, um, which is basically the only approved magic school and it's not that great. So, um, I'm trying to remember if Booker has it in his backstory that he went there or if he taught himself magic, but yeah, that'd be interesting to see. So, um, yeah, the Spires of Ekaros, um, basically run by a necromancy wizard, um, who's, um, evil and basically treats students horribly and, um, everyone <laughs> coming out there, uh, doesn't have, like, the best of times or memories, so. Uh, yeah, that is Ekaros. And, um, let's see here. Oh, um, the Obsidian Isle Prison. Um, I forgot about that. So, let me scroll over there. <laughs> I know you guys are just seeing me, like, zoom in and then out. <laughs> it's, like, all over the place. I also have a pretty legend over here, so, um, that's fun. Let me scroll just a little bit. Okay, so the Obsidian Island Prison, um, this one is actually in a one-shot that I ran on Caffeinated Arcade. Um, so I haven't gone there yet, uh, just because we're still finishing out that one-shot, but, um, basically, that's where the dynasty, um, houses dangerous, uh, criminals. And they're said to be, like, a dark ancient, um, relic underneath, um, the prison. So maybe the party will go there? I'm not sure. <laughs> it would be fun. But there's also, um, basically, I have a rumor set up to where no one has escaped the prison before except for one ship, and uh, they drowned uh, not long after escaping, so I have a little ghost ship that uh, travels um, past that island um, eastward uh, to the Lilac Bay, so there's a lot of ghost stories about that ship um, on that part of the continent, so pretty cool. Loosely inspired by Zelda, of course, but um, a lot of this is actually, so. Actually, that was one of my inspirations with the Alliance, just because um, everything's super upbeat and um, kind of, um, what's the word? Um, everyone's, like, wearing super colorful clothing and... Um, just uh, more jovial of a place so that's one of the interesting things about this campaign is the party can usually tell <laughs> when something's not wrong or there's like a quest they need to pick up because this jovial place will like suddenly get somber and it's more of this like um, juxtaposition so yeah it's fun to work with um one last area we'll talk about um and let me scroll up there one of the things that's been kind of cool with world building is um, having a player from um, each part of this continent and being able to have them in on the world building. So, um, let me pull this up here so I can see better. Nice. So, um, the northern part of this continent is very frigid, uh, very cold. Um, it's called the Kingdom of Akristan which is um, a dwarven kingdom, and one of our um, party members is from there, and it's been really interesting, the world build, uh, just because this nation is based on um, some magical innovation, but mainly enchanting like weapons, um, so he is an armor artificer, um, 
and yeah, so he's from For the Run, which is all the way to the east, next to the Kraken. <laughs> um, it's funny because we, we haven't mentioned that yet, but he has the map, so maybe he knows. <laughs> so um, we have For the Run, which is the school of magic um, in the northern part of the continent. Then um, the winter one is basically the capital, um, you could say, but it's three different dwarven clans that work together and um, also work separately and try to undermine each other. So there's some political intrigue there um, as they fight for control over the northern part of the continent. Then they're pretty neutral in terms of the conflict uh, between the dynasty and the alliance, so they don't like to take sides. Um, actually, one of the war drops I made was that, um, and this was actually um, Derek, the um, dwarf character's idea, but having um, the dwarven society stay out of things until um, basically part of their land was attacked by Lysivus and the dynasty. So, one of the ideas was that part of the bl Blighted Lands actually used to belong to Akristan. So, it was kind of interesting to kind of um, work with different territories and how it's all set up. But, yeah. <laughs> um, is there anything else I should dive into? I think I'm about ready to wrap up here. We've talked about a lot about Brista and a lot about... Um, world building and history, so I appreciate y'all sticking around. Um, yeah, I think that's everything. Um, and next week we'll be picking up again uh, with a campaign, so um, that will be when they finally confront Iraxium, and um, it'll be an interesting battle. <laughs> so they're already a little worn and torn after fighting a shadow demon, so... We'll see how that one goes, but um, that's where we're going next with the campaign, and I'm super excited. Sweet. Um, well, I will go ahead and log off for the night, but yeah, thanks for hanging out in the chat. Thanks for joining me for this little world building, and we'll be back next week, 8.30 UTC, with um, Adventures in Allman. I will catch you guys later. <laughs>